What's cracking, Big Dog Nation? It's your boy Nick here, back with Big Dogs Gotta Eat Fantasy Football. We're getting back into another team outlook. Last episode, Arizona Cardinals. If you missed that, go check it out here. We're going to continue into the NFC West with the Los Angeles Rams. If you've missed any of the other team outlooks or any of the other videos that I post already this summer, feel free to just go back to my channel, look those up. If you like what you see in this one or the other ones, please subscribe to the channel, give it that thumbs up button, and let's just get right into it. So, the Rams are a fun team to talk about. I like to use sarcasm a lot. I mean, it can't be as bad as the Hard Knocks. This has to be more entertaining. So, we start off the quarterback position, Jared Goff. The good news is, can only go up from where it was last year. Goff, obviously, the former number one overall pick out of Cal. He's a big, imposing presence as a quarterback. Six foot four. I'm going to move this over because this is a weird, awkward position. Six foot four, 200, you know, big prototypical quarterback build. Really bad year last year. Uh, led the Rams to an 0-7 record as their starter. 1,084 passing yards, five touchdowns, seven interceptions. Not a good ratio there. Only completed 54% of his passes. So Goff was Goffle. Got him. But so is everyone else on the team. Their offensive line ranked 29th in both run blocking and pass blocking as per football outsiders. They had no weapons on the outside. And their run game from Gurley was just god awful. So it's a shit show everywhere around. But what does that mean for 2017, right? There are a few things I do like about Goff's upside. They brought in Sean McVay. He was the offensive coordinator in the Redskins offense. Did a really good job with them. They turned into a really good offense. He developed Kirk Cousins well. He did a really good job developing Jordan Reed. So they brought in left tackle Andrew Whitworth, a huge building block for them in that line. He was one of the he's been one of the best tackles in the league as per pro football focus over the last few years. Gonna be a really big piece to protecting Goff's blind side. Goff is gonna be working with a few really highly recognized names in terms of quarterback coaches. So it's a guy, Tom Dudo, um, weird spelling, or Adam Dudo, I, I I apologize. D-E-D-E-A-U-X, and then a guy named Tom House. So both very highly respected quarterback coaches. Uh, he's only 22 years old, so he's got time to develop and, and change his mechanics if he needs to, or change his footwork and things like that. You see a lot of these older quarterbacks, such as like Blake Bortles, like five years into their career, saying, oh, he's got bad mechanics, let's try to fix him. That shit doesn't really work that well. Goff's really young, he has time to improve. All that being said, he's absolutely undraftable in fantasy this year. The weapons on the outside. They let go of Kenny Britt. And they went hard in free agency. I'm talking about like Kevin Love in the paint hard. Yeah, I understand. That's very soft. Their big signing was Robert Woods, formerly of Buffalo, to five years, $39 million. You guys understand like Terrell Pryor got less than that. Brandon Marshall got less than that. Kenny Stills. Uh, like all these players got less money in contracts and less per year than what Robert Woods got from them. I feel sorry for whoever's bank that check is being withdrawn from and paid to Robert Woods' bank. It's gonna be his fifth year in the NFL. He's yet to hit 700 receiving yards. I'm not really sure what part of that says $40 million, sign me up. In my opinion, Woods is the fourth option in this offense and I'll explain in a minute. So while we're on other terribly contracted wide receivers in Los Angeles, Let's talk about Tavon Austin. Really good 2015 campaign, but as you expect with those type of players who are gadget players who don't con consistently produce on a week-to-week -week basis, he finished 2016 as wide receiver 55 in fantasy. He, that's exactly what it is. He's a gadget player on a really bad offense. So offense scores 14 points a game. He's never going to win balls on the outside. He's only 5'9". They have to produce plays for him. So here's a couple stats from last year. He had less than three fantasy points in eight out of 15 games. And he broke 65 receiving yards one time in those 15 games. If you had him, if you drafted him last year, it was an absolute bust. So draft at your own risk. He's a best ball kind of player. If you t if you play MFL 10s, he's not a bad option. It's not a good option, but he's not as terrible as he is in redraft leagues. The best part of this offseason for the Rams, other than the Whitworth signing, was what they did in the draft. I am absolutely in love with one of the guys that they picked. His name is Cooper Cup. I talked about him in the rookie video, in the rookie uh, blog post I did, which I'll link right here. He was an absolute stud in college in terms of production, in terms of what he could do. There's no bad part of his game. Matt Harmon, very highly respected in the fantasy football kind of community. 
he does this thing called reception perception where he looks at basically, he takes a sample size of like, I don't know, however many games a player plays in in college, looks at every single route he runs and grades them on a pass coverage, man-to-man -man coverage, press coverage, contested targets, things like that. And Cooper Cup rated extremely high. And a lot of these ratings from Matt Harmon tend to play themselves out and tend to pan out well. If he rate, rates you very high, you usually produce pretty well. So I want to look into the reports that have been coming out of of the Rams camp so far this offseason on Cup. He's been dubbed the star of this month's rookie uh, mini camp. Back in college, he broke the career receiving yards with 6,464. ESPN Rams reporter Alden Gonzalez expects third round wide receiver Cooper Cup to be Jared Goff's security blanket. OC Matt Floor said, He's an extremely polished route runner, got great hands. You could tell he works at his craft each and every day, does a great job. He's a slot guy, but he has a much, much more size and much more talent than that and he could play on the outside and I think he should be playing on the outside over a guy like Robert Woods in two wide receiver sets. He's 6'2", uh, about 200 pounds. So he's built similarly to Jordan Matthews and I think he's gonna be just like Jordan Matthews, but better. He killed it in his senior bowl, uh, in the senior bowl that whole week. He played against guys like Marcus Peters, Sidney Jones, all uh, first round talents. You know, he's kind of like an Eric Decker where he plays a lot of slot, he's built like him but he's capable of playing the outside if you need to. He's good in the red zone, good by the goal line. I really, really think he's gonna be a sneaky PPR player this year. I think he's gonna lead the team in receptions too. That's one of my bolder predictions this year, but I really see Cup outproducing Robert Woods in this offense. Right now, he's not hes not even on people's radars, really. He's getting picked like 250th overall wide receiver, 95. He'll be like a, late, a last round pick in almost every one of my drafts that I can get him in, especially in like keeper or dynasty leagues. I love me some Cup this year. So keep an eye out for him and more reports. So the tight end position is actually an interesting, uh, an interesting dilemma here in Los Angeles as well because they picked a guy named Tyler Higby last year. Really good athlete, fourth rounder, got a lot of hype. Didn't pan out as well as most people expected it. Some off the field incidents. He only got like 28 targets last year. But then Sean McVay came in and Sean McVay is, like I said, the former OC of the Redskins. And he was the one who really developed Jordan Reed into that type of player. So he went out and handpicked this guy Gerald Everett this year in the draft. They took him really early, 44th pick overall. So second rounder, very unknown because he was just a basketball player uh, up until just a couple years ago when he started playing football. Obviously everyone likes to hype up the basketball type players because for the most part they play now because they're very good athletes. He hopped around small schools, small colleges. He's, he's 6'3", 240 pounds, so he's He's undersized, but he's he's just the right size for that Jordan Reed type role. Because remember, Jordan Reed's a smaller guy in, ter in terms of tight end, but he's a very, very good athlete, very good pass catcher, and that's the kind of role that they want to use him in. A ton of reports coming out this offseason that Sean McVay wants to use Everett in that Jordan Reed type role, and they think it's going to be a very tight end, pass-heavy offense. So, you know, there's going to be rumors coming out that Higby's going to play a lot, that Everett's going to play a lot. They kind of eat at each other, and there's not enough go around, you know? Remember, the Rams only threw for... 14 touchdowns last year. Kenny Britt had five of them, so he had over like 36% of the touchdowns. It's not a lot of love to go around to the tight end position, which is a fantasy position that very heavily relies on touchdowns. That being said, Gerald Everett is very good with the ball in his hands. He, let me see, he led all college tight ends and missed tackles forced during his final two seasons at South Alabama, that's where he's from. 63.5% of his receiving yards at South Alabama came after the catch. So they're trying to build around these athletic tight ends, as you can see, they want to use them in the offense. There's just not a lot of volume going around right now. So stay tuned on reports there. I'm not really investing anything more than tight end 18 to 20 ranking in either of these guys. Which leads me to the ground game. If you've been following me at all this summer, you know how much I love to hate Todd Gurley. And I've done enough videos already that I feel like I have a synopsis of what I can say about him. Basically, you go back to his rookie year, he had that incredible run of four games that cemented him as the greatest running back of all time. Outside of those four games against really bad rush defenses, he has literally had zero success in the NFL. It was awful last year, 0.26 fantasy points per opportunity tied for 60th among running backs. He more than doubled his catch total from 2015 to 2016, went 24 to 43, and still scored four fantasy points less per game in PPR leagues. Tells you how bad of a runner he was. Their offensive line is terrible. They score 14 points a game. They don't score the ball. He's never gonna have goal line looks, and when he does, they're very few and far between. So his touchdown ceiling is very capped. The line being terrible, Adam Whitworth obviously is a nice upgrade there, not going to fix everything. He's more uh, an upgrade for Jared Goff, left tackle position. And now they brought in Lance Dunbar, 
who was the pass catcher in Dallas uh, as a running back. And the reports are already saying that Dunbar is going to be that third down guy. So the fact that Gurley more than doubled his catch total, lost four points a game in PPR, and now is going to be losing a lot more pass catching work to Dunbar coming in. Like there's no upside here. A bad offense, a bad line, pass catching is going down. He doesn't look good as a runner at all. So, you know, there's no, to me, I don't see any upside here. I see him as a low end RB2. Right now he's getting picked as RB8, number 18, number 19 overall. Jay Ajayi is going after him. DeMarco Murray is going after it. Wow, what the f I'm taking DeMarco way before him. Jay Ajayi way before him. Probably even take Leonard Fournette before him. I already did my top 50 PPR or half point PPR rankings and Gurley was probably like 30 or 31 in that range. Probably running back 15-ish, even lower possibly. There's a ton of guys I would take before Gurley and I'm not touching him in the first two rounds. The only upside people are going to say is we've seen him do it before. Like, no, we really haven't. We saw it in four games what he did two years ago, and he hasn't even come close to looking like that since. I'm off Gurley. Uh, Dunbar is going to be obviously that pass catcher there. If you're just a pass catcher in an offense that doesn't really move the ball. <sighs> so to me, yeah, it just comes down to Gurley is going to be a 15 carry guy in, a, in an offense that doesn't score the ball with very, very low ceiling in terms of PPR um, and scoring. So another quick little uh, outlook for you guys for the Rammies, for the Rambers, the new LA team. And I hope that was informational. I hope it had some value for you. If it did, please subscribe to the channel if you're new. If you enjoyed, give it that thumbs up, please. Share the video if you want. We're going to be coming back with team outlooks for all 32 teams, along with bus videos, sleeper videos, rankings, mock drafts, all that good stuff. So make sure you stay tuned. Follow us on Twitter. Go subscribe to the blog because I put all these in blog posts as well. Stay tuned for the Big Dogs Gotta Eat Dad Hats in production. They should be shipping here in about a week or two. So if you're, uh, if you're looking to get a sweet dad hat for the summer, you can get mine. You can get mine. And also, if you need any gear for your fantasy football league, talking about draft board kits, uh, championship belts, rings, trophies, fantasyjocks.com is that place to go. Highest quality in the industry. I have an affiliate link down below. I promise I wouldn't steer you wrong. Their stuff is the GOAT. And uh, that's really it. So I'll see you guys next time. And I appreciate your time. I appreciate y'all sticking around with me, hanging out with me, saying what's up. Peace out, homies. Now, who's hot, who's not? Tell me who rock, who sell out in the stores? You tell me who flop, who cop the blue drop, who jewels got pop, who mostly go see down to the blue top. The same old pimp, mace, you know ain't nothing changed but my limp. Can't stop till I see my name on a blimp. Guarantee a million sales, pull it up a luck. You don't believe in Harlem world, double up.